You heard us on the radio. You seen us on tour. Guess what? We sitting on your TV. Marty G's turntable wizard set the science lab off. Get ready for the science lab in Grand Hank. Now let me tell you how. First of all, we have to define what science means. It is defined. There's a logical process that's based upon hypotheses, theories, and experimentations. Sounds simple enough, right? But then there's quantitative and qualitative analyzation for identification and confirmation of the observation for compilation. So that we have for correct interpretation of the information for consolidation of our scientific publication to help us better our situations. Science is related to everything we do and say from the cars we drive to the clothes we wear whether built cap straight or kinky hair yet science is still misunderstood many think it's bad but science is good anybody 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 now it's time for the man that taught me science now he's going to teach you science give it up an educational rapper entrepreneur grand hank ladies and gentlemen welcome to another edition of the science lab of grand hank you are looking at him right here, the heavyweight champion of science. And each week in the Science Lab of Grand Hank, we take science to a new level by making science exciting, interesting, and fun. And you saw him at the top of the show. He is the turntable wizard. Marty G's, welcome to the Science Lab of Grand Hank. Uh, Grand Hank, thanks for having me. Another episode. Let's go. In this particular lesson, I'm going to demonstrate my superpowers as I will run a series of combustion reactions in which something similar to what you've experienced when you see a combustion reaction. The only difference thing is these combustion reactions are going to talk. That's right, I'm gonna generate a combustion reaction that talks. Now, in order to do that, I've gotta talk safety first. Marty, let's handle the safety tips. Do what you gotta do right away. Let's be safe with this experiment. All right, safety tip number one, always conduct experiments under the supervision of a teacher or an adult. Safety tip number two, wear safety glasses at all times when working in the lab. Safety tip number three, no food or beverages allowed, do not taste the chemicals. Safety tip number four, never play in the lab. And finally, safety tip number five, all accidents should be reported to a teacher or an adult immediately, no matter how minor the accident. Ladies accident. and gentlemen, I love it, Marty. Thanks for keeping safety in perspective. We are ready to go now. Now, Marty, I talked earlier about this word combustion reaction. Uh, let's handle that word so my audience understands what combustion is and they can take it down and have it in their memories. Combustion or burning is an exothermic reaction between a substance and a gas. Combustion usually takes place in air when the substance which burns combines with oxygen. Back to you, Hank. That is interesting because he's defined the combustion, but you know what? Combustion reactions as a whole, normally they are not spontaneous. What we're going to do today, though, will be spontaneous. But in general, combustion reactions aren't spontaneous. So what I'm going to do is take a wooden splint and uh, take a wooden splint. I'm just going to tape it on the end. I've had some pre-cut pieces of tape, and I'm just going to tape it on the end right here. And now uh, here's the experiment before the experiment. What I'm going to do is I have a sparker. So once I spark this and ignite uh, this wood and get this wood splint to burn, I'm going to step back and I'm going to take my device and I'm going to stick it over and probably angle it inside. And then we should see the reaction, uh, this combustion reaction take place. So let's dig right in. All right. So I'm going to ignite this uh, with my sparker here. And now we're going to ask that we lower the lights. And once we lower the lights, uh, we're going to watch this experiment. We're gonna have to bring them all the way down. We're gonna bring them down, lower it in low, because we wanna see this beautiful flash here. Now this is beautiful. That's enough. This is a beautiful flash. Now let's take our eyes and let's watch it and let's see what happens. Whoa, you saw it right here. All right, so the first thing is said, whoosh, 
it said some language. I don't particularly understand the language, Marty, but it did say something. And uh, this particular X right here is now going to be moved off to the side. Let's take a break, Grand Hank, as I reset the last piece. Marty, do what you got to do. Now, let's look at the thing to remember, Marty. I need them to walk away with something. It's been exciting. Let's see what they can remember. All right, thing to remember. In order for a reaction to occur, the molecules must have a certain energy called activation energy. In many reactions, the particles already have this energy and react right away. In others, energy has to be supplied for the particles to react the activation energy. Back to you, Hank. Now, that's interesting. They look on paper here. Let's see it. I want to see it. How, how does it work, Brian, Hank? Well, we've got energy levels here, and this is in increasing order, and the course of the reaction running over. Now, we have a activation energy is this, this distance here between this, uh, these, this arrow here. Now, we have our molecules here. They collide. There's some energy that has to get over this hurdle, and once it gets over the hurdle, man, this pathway, the energy comes right back down. The difference in it, we get a difference between the energy of the reactants and the difference of the energy of the product. And that's what activation energy looks like. Now, I'm interested in finding out, well, Grand A, uh, what's the real world connection here? Does this connect to the real world? Well, of course it does, and here's how. When we think of the real world, eating and drinking are, are forms of combustion. Uh, uh, the food we eat is burnt up inside our bodies by the oxygen we breathe. This produces energy that we can use, and that's how this connects. We do a slow combustion in our bodies. Now, let's look here, Marty, at the answer to the science factor. Can we get it in? All Marty, right. what you got? For Today's science factor question. What is the difference between slow and rapid combustion? The answer, slow combustion takes place at low temperatures and no flames occur. Respiration is an example of slow combustion. Rapid combustion is when a large amount of heat and light energy is given off. An explosion is an example of rapid combustion. Back to you, Hank. Ladies and gentlemen, what did you see here? Did you see a slow combustion or a rapid combustion? My answer is we saw a rapid combustion here today. Now, let's look at the discussion topics, Marty, and let's wrap this thing up. All right, discussion topic number one. What causes the chemicals on the end of a match to react and burn? Discussion topic number two. Does the catalyst increase or lower the activation energy in a chemical reaction? Back to you, Hank. Marty, did I do it? This is it, my man. Did we so, knock it down? We defend the title again. We can walk out of here. Our audience has learned something. They learned about combustion reactions. They learned about activation energy. I have nothing else to do this week. So in leaving and in closing, remember, knowledge is power. Anybody can be a scientist, including you, Marty G's. Thanks for hanging out the turntable wizard. Fire the wheels of steel up. You've been watching the Science Lab for Grand Hank.